Story one. Am I the a-hole for keeping my wife on a short leash after she cheated on me? My 30 male, wife 31 female, of five years cheated on me last year with her friend when she was out with her friend group. She used to do this often but always came back at around 12 a.m. But this time she came home very late at around 5 a.m. and drunk and I didn't press the issue that night. She was distanced and didn't talk much to me afterwards the next few days. I only found out a couple days later when she confessed to cheating after I kept asking her why she was so cold to me. I was shocked. I never liked the fact that she went out to bars and clubs, but she never gave me a reason to distrust her until that night. I immediately grabbed a bag, packed some stuff, and left. She was begging me to talk about it, but I wasn't in the mood for it. I was angry, upset, sad. I knew that I wasn't in the right headspace for this kind of talk, so I stayed with a friend. Fast forward a few days later and I agreed to talk to her. She said she was so sorry and would never happen again and that she would do anything to make me stay. So I spent the time I was away thinking of staying or leaving, and I hate the fact that I still love her. We don't have kids together, but part of me still wanted to stay. I gave her certain conditions if she wanted me to stay. The first one is to never see the man she cheated on me with ever again. The second was that I could see her phone or computer any time I wanted without having to ask. The last one was that she could no longer go out to bars or clubs without me. She agreed to all of this. Over the last year, she's been estranged from her friend group because she can't go out with them without seeing the man she cheated on me with, and she hasn't really made any new friends. I haven't checked her phone or computer either. I know she likes to go out, so I try my best to go with her when I have time. The bar and club scene was never my thing, but I try to enjoy it with her. Things haven't been the same as before, and I've thought about losing the she-can't-go-without-me rule, but I keep thinking of what she did. I've explained this to my friend, and she said I should just divorce her if I can't trust her anymore. I've thought about it. I wasn't as happy as I used to be. She says she's happy with me around, but she isn't as energetic as she used to be. So, am I the a-hole? <sighs> I really thought that I wasn't going to be on this person's side at all when they referred to, like, the short leash and the not going out you know, without him at all. Because I'm like, yeah, you've got to have trust, you know, if you can't have some trust. I think I'm okay with, like, you know, being able to check the phone and computer. Like, there needs to be something that happens that helps reestablish trust. But it also sounds like that's not really happening. Like, it's been around a year, it sounds like, and they haven't started to rebuild that trust. And she hasn't been as happy. And while she might have been like, please, I'll do anything to make you stay, I think sometimes people are more afraid of just being alone uh, than they are, than, nah, that's not the way to put it. They just, people want to not be alone, and sometimes they're just scared of that and don't want to admit that maybe she cheated because she's not as happy. I don't know. There's so much that could be going on here that I really don't know, but what I'll say is, yeah, if after a year, if you really don't have trust and you both don't seem happy, it might be better for the both of you to talk about divorce or something. It doesn't have to be the worst thing. Sometimes it's the right choice. So, yeah, I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe therapy. I don't know. I just hope it works out. Story two. My husband has ruined our lives by asking me to double his lunch serving for work. I'm on a throwaway because I still haven't fully decided on divorce, but I'm 95% sure of it. Me, 26 female, and my husband, 25 male, have been married for almost two years and have a six-month-old baby. I work part-time only to supplement our income and to pay for the legal process of getting him documented. We're very fortunate that it seems it may be an easy process of maybe two years max for his residency, but now I'm going to cancel everything and ask for a divorce. My routine used to be I wake up one and a half hours before him in the morning and make him lunch and pack everything for him for work and have his breakfast, coffee, and clothes ready for him to wake up, eat, get dressed, and head out within 30 minutes. He used to be satisfied with what I packed him, a freshly made chicken and either honey buffalo, lemon pepper, or salad, or some sort of chicken wraps, etc. Pure, healthy food. I did this because I wanted to make his life easier and show him I cared and loved him, and I've done this since we first moved in together more than three years ago. Well, recently, I've had to start including dinner leftovers because he started asking for more food that he was still hungry afterwards, which I thought was odd because no matter if I work or not, he always comes home to prepared food, so even if he wasn't full, he would be okay. 
but I explained it off with maybe he's bulking or something. So I started including what I normally take to work, which has caused me to either go without lunch or having to wait till after work or be late for work because I have to wait till the food is ready and take some because I'm breastfeeding and can't miss eating every time. I'll leave food going such as in a crock pot or low heat depending on how long I leave he gets home. Well, last week, when I was packing his lunch, I found an unrecognized second fork in his lunchbox and was thrown off. So I asked, and he said he found it in the kitchen of his work and brought it home. Odd, why didn't he just leave it? I had noticed small changes in him that I gaslighted myself into being insecure because I just had a baby, but this made the pit in my stomach churn. So, a few days later, I decided to go to his work during lunch to surprise him with dessert and for him to see the baby. Well, this was when I found out why he wanted more food. His coworker, he told me no longer worked there, who I'd caught him talking too friendly to, and I told him it bothered me and I had him remove from everything and block on WhatsApp, not only still worked there, but was eating the lunch I freshly prepared for him, and he was eating the leftovers. I didn't cause a scene, instead took pictures and added to my folder of everything he's done before, from simple hearting other girls' stories after telling me he didn't, to naked pictures of a coworker from a previous job he got fired from because of her. I drove home crying to pack my things. When I got home, I took the bassinet and anything I'd need for the baby and my essentials and went to my sister and brother-in-laws and told them everything and even showed him our conversations from WhatsApp where he told me she no longer worked there. I normally text him throughout the day, so he started texting me and calling me to see if I was okay and what was for dinner. He was almost off. Is everything okay? And then he got to the house an hour earlier than usual, which also has me questioning if he's been lying about what time he gets off, too, and saw mine and the baby's things gone, and my letter that he had seven days to leave my house, my mom gave it to me when I was 20, and that he can communicate with my mother to see the baby when I'm at work, or whenever he wants to see her, just let her know and I'll drop off the baby with her. I, for the time being, don't want anything to do with him and I left the printed photos of them eating lunch, laughing together under the letter. Later that night, when I decided I no longer wanted anything to do with him, I informed the lawyer, we had a group WhatsApp chat with him, the lawyer, paralegal, and my brother-in-law, our co-sponsor, that I no longer was going to need his services, and then messaged the lawyer privately to ask if I could maybe move our contract as the money I have paid so far over to his divorce and family practice. He said, unfortunately, no, there's some clause or something that if we decide to no longer pursue the case, we lose the money we've invested, and also that his immigration practice is a partnership with different people than his family one, until we get a response for our next appointment from the government, and if we haven't worked things out by then, then he will cancel everything. Well, this causes him to go insane, because now if he doesn't get papers, he has to choose between his daughter and parents, to either risk never seeing his parents and family again, or never seeing his daughter again if he goes over there. He's begging me to the point I blocked him on everything. He's come to my brother-in-law's house and been told to leave or were calling the police. Then he came back drunk with his buddies who were all scared off by my brother-in-law and his shotgun. I feel so lost, broken, and depressed. I also have security at work to make sure he doesn't show up at my office. My sister tells me to leave him, but not to divorce, so he can never get with anyone else and get papers, but I can't do that to him. I've gone back home only to check on the house and see if he's gone. I'm still staying with my sister, and surprisingly there's no damage to anything, and his things only are gone. So at least I feel a little relief in that. I'm not looking for advice. I know I'm not going back. There's no longer any trust. My mental health wouldn't be safe in that relationship, and I know I can't have my daughter grow up with that kind of relationship being an example. I just need to put this out there in order to solidify my brain and to be able to reflect that this is now a pattern and he's gone beyond disrespecting me by now, also making me make her food. I've been budgeting, trying to make things last, sometimes eating less than I want to or skipping meals if possible. If a meal was heavier of carbs, I'd skip since I should have enough for my milk supply. All to be able to pay bills, lawyer his gym membership, and supplements. I lost out on rest and sleep because I endure laundry and the house is kept spotless while the baby sleeps. I've basically gone from an independently educated career woman to a 1950s housewife with a job and school, all because I blindly fell for this man. When I say I feel stupid, that's an understatement. To this poster and anyone who ends up in a situation like she did, do not feel stupid.
Cheaters like this manipulate. They are manipulators, and they are good at it, and they trick people. They haven't just tricked you. They're tricking the person they're cheating with to a degree. They've probably tricked friends and family and stuff. You're not the only one, and you also have the fact that you're in love with them, so you want to trust them. That's part of a relationship is trust. And it's hard to believe that someone you care about that much would break that trust. So please, never feel bad uh, about yourself for something like this happening. Um, what he did, uh, there's just no justification. And that really, really sucks. And I hope that no one out there watching this ever has to go through something like that. Story three. Mother-in-law told my daughter that Santa isn't real, so I told her that God isn't real. My mother-in-law doesn't like me at all. She's one of the typical moms who doesn't want her son to be stolen away by another woman, so my existence alone is enough for her to resent me. It doesn't help that I don't practice her religion and that we don't plan on baptizing our children. This is a mutual decision between my husband and I. For a little extra context, she sends me Bible verses and quotes about being subservient to your husband on a regular basis to get under my skin. After telling her very nicely and calmly to stop once, she had a full-blown meltdown slash tantrum about how I won't let her save me, so I just ignore her messages now. My daughter, four, loves Christmas. She loves decorating the house and helping bake the cookies, and she gets to pick the tree out this year. She's so excited, it's literally so adorable, she's been talking about it since July. She also is a firm believer in Santa. She already has a mile-long list of things she wants him to get her. Side note, she isn't spoiled at all. Some of the other things on her list are random items she sees at the grocery store or things on our shelves. Our dog that we had for six years is on her list. She just likes writing them, aka making me write them. My mother-in-law was over today, and my daughter was asking me to add another random item to her Santa list. As my mother-in-law heard her say it, she immediately responds to her, saying that Santa isn't real, and that me and my husband are the ones who buy the gifts under the tree. This obviously went over like a lead balloon with my child, but my mother-in-law looked pretty happy with herself for the crap storm she just created for me and for breaking my daughter's heart. I immediately told her to pack her crap and get the F out of my house, and that she wasn't welcome near my baby anymore. She tried to respond that she did us a favor and that our child shouldn't be thinking a man who doesn't exist for the nice things we do for her, so I responded that it was a rich statement coming from someone who had spent their entire life praying to a man who also doesn't exist. I also told her I was very sorry she let the devil breed hate in her heart, then I slammed the door in her face. Husband is completely on my side and is completely shattered that his mom ruined something so special for our daughter, but we have received a few texts and calls from his siblings who think I was out of line and that I should be apologizing to her. I'm still so angry that I can't really judge for myself if I'm in the right, wrong, or not. But I really don't think that I am. I think she crossed an uncrossable line and that I'm justified in not letting her have a future relationship with my daughter or any children we might have later. Not looking for advice, just to talk crap and vent. I mean, yeah, I'm sorry. That mother-in-law sounds awful. Now, look, I, I've never hidden the fact that I am I'm an atheist, but I don't typically have a problem if, like, a Christian wants to share, like, a Bible verse or something with me, because, yeah, they want to save me from hell. That's a nice enough thought, but... A, if she's sending verses about how a wife should be subservient to a husband, that's not trying to save someone's soul. That's gross. And just her general attitude. It's like, no, you don't. That, that's not how you save someone. I used to be a diehard Christian. That is not cool, the way that this mother-in-law is acting. And then to decide to spoil the whole Santa thing for the daughter, that's mean. Mother-in-law, you don't get to decide whether or not the parents get to, like, have the little Santa mythos. It's a cute thing for kids to believe in. I don't think there's any harm in it. Most kids figure it out for themselves by the time they're, like, six. It's fine. And taking that away from the little girl who's excited about it, just mean. That's just mean. Now, do I think that you should be like, you never get to have a relationship with my daughter? <sighs> That might be a bit much, though I guess I don't know everything this person's gone through with a mother-in-law, but it feels a little bit harsh, but 
her being, you know, upset about the whole, like, yeah, you believe in someone that doesn't exist. Nah, I support that one. If the mother-in-law is going to be crappy, be, be a little crappy back. Story four. My parents ruined my wedding, and I don't think I can get over it. My now husband and I got married on Halloween, and I'm not okay with how our day went. We didn't want anything big, just close friends and family at the courthouse dressed in costumes. There were supposed to be 12 adults and one child that was on our guest list. Let's start off with the night before. My husband got sick, and he took the whole day to recover to be well. The plan was to get my nails done, have my mom French braid my hair, then go home, help him feel better, and pack. When I got to my parents' house, my mom informed me that my two aunts weren't coming and that she invited my cousin. I didn't want him there at first. Second, she told me as my dad was on the way to pick him and my sister up. I love my cousin, but I'm not close with him, and he's an alcoholic that everybody enables. My small reception was not dry, and she promised me he wouldn't be a problem. The reception was at my parents' house, so she was busy cleaning. I still needed to comb my hair out, and she wanted to surprise me with decorations. Long story short, we were running low on time, and it was 9 p.m., and I needed to head home to sleep since our wedding was early in the morning. She doesn't start my hair until after her and my cousin start drinking and smoking. I'm already annoyed. I make it home at midnight and still have to check on hubby and pack. I go to bed at 3 a.m. and have to be up at 5 a.m., but I woke up 30 minutes late. I drive back to her house to get ready and help her get ready. When I got there, everyone was sleeping because after they put up the decorations, they stayed up drinking and smoking. Already running late and stressing because the veil I made myself wouldn't stay, my cousin starts rushing me. My parents start fighting loudly and I'm already exhausted. We made it to the courthouse to get married and I got a handful of pictures, but everyone else is in like 30 pictures. I got one pic that I liked and only 10 were taken. We get a brunch, and only my friends and are talking to me and my husband, and everyone else isn't even paying attention to us. My mom keeps saying, I'm a mother-in-law today. My friends had to leave. They let us know in advance. So now it's just my family. My cousin is super drunk, won't stop talking, no one is listening to me, and the only person that keeps checking on me is my husband. Eventually, I get overwhelmed, and we check into our hotel and take a nap. Two to three hours later, we head back to the house to give everyone a second chance, but they are clearly more intoxicated and loud. Cuss words are flying. My husband tries to calm me down by telling me to start playing our wedding playlist that we made ourselves. The entire time, my cousin is complaining about the music. He wanted us to play more hardcore rap. Now, I wasn't opposed to song requests and even played some songs he requested, but every song that wasn't his, he complained, asked me to turn it off, or asked why I would play this song. Our first dance was to Can I Have This Dance from HSM, and he asked me to turn it off. When we were ready to cut the cake, no one came and took pictures. No one was even in the room with us because my cousin was drunk wrapping his hot mess bars. My wedding day didn't feel like my day. I had, to, I had no say in anything, no one paid attention to us, and I have one picture. This was supposed to be the happiest day of my life, but here I am. I'm crying at 4.32 a.m. on Reddit, no sleep, while my husband sleeps peacefully. I couldn't tell him earlier because we had to get intoxicated just to deal with them, and he already doesn't like my dad, so I didn't want him to say anything in that situation. <sighs> Man, that sucks. Folks, if you're going to someone else's wedding, try and make it a nice day for them, and try to make the day about them. Like, and I know that these people chose to go for a very, like, simple casual wedding it's a courthouse it's just some friends and family getting together but that doesn't mean that it's not important to them they're still choosing it to share with you so like treat it with some respect make the day about them and try and be nicer and also if you have a really small select guest list other guests do not invite people who weren't originally invited there may be reasons like that's that's such common sense. Oh, man, they treated this like such a casual, like, Sunday brunch or something like that. Oh, it's just a casual get-together. Who cares? No, it's still a wedding. Jeez. Hey, folks, quick content warning for this last story here. Uh, there's uh, some pretty gross mental abuse from a parent related to intercourse in this story. And so if you're not comfortable with that, you don't want to hear it. Um, you may want to skip this story by probably stopping the video because it, it's the last story. Story five. 
My dad keeps making inappropriate comments on me and my boyfriend. To start this off, me and my dad have a bad relationship. He's emotionally, mentally, and physically abusive to me as well as a diagnosed narcissist. My boyfriend and I are currently doing long distance and I flew over every three to four months to see him. My dad has a history of always making me feel less and making me seem less in front of others. Three days ago, I came back from seeing my boyfriend and I shared with my mom we'd been intimate for the first time, which is a big deal to me because of trauma I will not be sharing. My dad somehow found out and has taken it upon himself to now shame me any chance he gets. The jokes go from buying me a pregnancy test out of the blue, asking me if he should be expecting a noise complaint from the hotel we're at, to saying we should record next time to show off at the family Christmas party. It's gotten to the point where I don't even feel safe showering because any time I'm about to, he makes some kind of remarks towards I'm being the only place I could get myself off. It's only been three days after I got a break from the abuse for a month, and it's already picking up again along with this. I'm really at my last straw. feel really awful for this person having to deal with that, and I hope that they are not stuck in that house with that dad for long. And frankly, once they get out of that house and away from that dad, I wouldn't blame them one bit for going complete no contact with that dad, because that's so gross. And I don't like parents who make mean jokes at their kids' expenses. Especially, like, if you have a rapport with your kid where you, like, joke with each other and you know you're both okay with that and you have good communication, more power to you. My dad and I joke around with each other. It's, it's fine. But when you're saying stuff that your kid clearly is uncomfortable with for your own laughs, you suck. You suck big time. I'm sorry. That's not good parenting. Don't tell me, like, oh, it helps build a thick skin. No, you've got a thick skull and uh, go eat a big old bag of poop. <laughs> what? Please leave your story in the comments. I would love to make a video on them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.